is up and welcome to the Refined Strength Podcast. I have a very special guest with us today, the one and only Daraja Wiedemoyer. Hello. I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be have you back too. The last time we had you on, the first time I had you on was when you were like, just like newly publicly pregnant. Like you were past your 12 weeks and we talked a lot about you as a pregnant Olympian and your just like next steps and how you were thinking about your athletic career and Mm -hmm. um, just like how everything is is gonna go with that and I think I got a lot of great feedback from that episode just people really excited for you as a person and as a mom but also just excited to hear like real shit about being (laughs) what it's like to like be like at the highest level of you know, bikini Olympia status, and then um, now transitioning into being a mom, but still being the athlete that you are and giving yourself Mm -hmm. grace. And I think that's one of the biggest, biggest, one of the coolest things about you is how much you do give yourself grace and you are really real about where you're at at any given time, whether it's prep, pregnancy, whatever. And Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a big part of just why I love you as a person and um, your personality and your values are a huge reason why you're here today in this new capacity um, <laughs> is a new coach for refined strength. Oh my God, so, uh, the anticipation is killing I know, me. <laughs> I know, so we're recording this a few weeks prior to the release. Um, we, if you're listening to this, this just launched right after the Olympia and yeah. um, pretty sure. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, so we wanted to give it some time to really like get everything settled with, you know, getting your clients all onboarded and making this transition as seamless as possible. Yeah. And I know a lot of people are running to this episode to to try to see, you know, if there's any tea spilt. Tea and, tea. The gossip. <laughs> and I just want to give a disclaimer if you guys want to stop listening after this. <laughs> yeah. um, that's not what this episode is about. No. So um, because a big a big part of why what. I want to do with refined strength and one of my just values as a coach and as a person is to rise above and to focus on the present and the future. And that's what I want to do with this episode. And while I've, I'm sure people can imagine there's all sorts of reasons and a lot of thought and care and concern that went into this very big change, but it's nobody's business, but our own on why Taraja is now here or why she left Pro Physique to come here. But the important thing is, is that she's here and she's still the amazing coach that she always was. She's just going, stepping into a new era. So yeah. tell, tell us your thoughts on where you're at right now. Newly transitioned, almost about to pop. Tell us. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Honestly, like, it's just, I'm really, really excited, like to just kind of start off and say that. And like, we kind of mentioned, it's not really like, we're not here to kind of just discuss the ins and out and like the tea. Um, it really is this, the beginning of a new chapter. And it's something that I've kind of been thinking about, um, over the last year or so and like what that would look like. And when you meaning that meaning like going off on my own or like kind of venturing out um, and, you know, obviously you did it and seeing you do it. And obviously we've also become great friends. We met through coaching through Team Pro Physique um, and also being clients of Paul's and like watching you kind of venture off and like take that leap was obviously to me, I was like, damn, that girl's courageous, you know, (laughs) she's just like badass and bold for just so going, you know what, this is just, you know, this aligns with me. I kind of want to create my own brand, um, and venture out. And I was like, Hmm, okay, cool. Like someone's doing that. It's doable. And there have been, you know, a couple of other coaches that have gone off and do that, done that. 
Kaylee had her own. Um, I know you had Kaylee on as a guest, another yeah. friend of ours. <laughs> and, you know, she was coaching on her own before and then coached under Pro Physique and then decided to go back and do her own thing. And I think just in me kind of thinking about, okay, I'm going to be on maternity leave soon. I'm organizing my clients to kind of prepare them for that and just kind of really looking at everything. And then the more I'm looking at all of this data and stuff and watching how much you've grown and how exciting it's been for you and how happy I've been for you, I was like, I think I could do that. And like, there's ways that I could lean into kind of really growing separate from, you know, pro physique and kind of taking what I've learned um, and kind of really just leaning into my own values and coaching philosophies. And I think it's funny because I think back to when I first started getting into competing, I really actually had kind of set, not really said it out loud, but I set a mini goal to kind of have a career in fitness. And then come to today, I like never really kind of realized like, I'm doing that. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I, it's my, real. I'm really doing it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's literally happening. Like, years later, obviously, had already kind of established that, you know, quitting my day job to compete full time and then start coaching. Um, and so, I think, you know, it's coaching. I didn't want to coach originally. Um, I really wanted to just stick to posing coaching and then just like competing because I just, the idea of coaching not just like lifestyle clients or people who want to like strive for more, you know, for better fitness goals. Um, but let alone competitors, you know, I was like intimidated by that. Cause I was like, yeah. this is an important job. I honestly saw it as a very, and I still do see it as a very important job. And it's, you know, not just a matter of, you know, helping someone lose a few pounds. It's like really kind of, I mean, obviously depending on who you work with and who their goals are, but I think for me, I value what fine tuning and refining your strengths and like your fitness goals, whether it be your nutrition, your training and prioritizing yourself in that way in your health, mentally, physically, spiritually, like just helps you grow in so many ways. And I just saw that in myself as I grow, grew as a competitor. And I was like seeing that more and more as I was coaching posing. And I was like, you know what? I really do think that I could do this well. Um, and so that's when I decided to start coaching. And I think, you know, for a while, I kind of just saw a bit of a ceiling of like, okay, this is kind of like it. But, you know, obviously you and just seeing other also like moms and like coaches that I follow, the only ceiling really that you have is the one that you create for yourself or the one that you accept. And so I'm just excited to like, break through the one that I've like been kind of previously feeling like I'm under so that I can continue to grow and be a better coach for my clients and lean into more of that. I'm just like beyond pumped and just excited to do it alongside some really cool people. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm excited too. And I think that thing you said just now about like breaking through the ceilings that we set ourselves under, like right now, you know, you're breaking through a ceiling of just like where you've been at, right? You've been coaching under at a company for a certain amount of time and now you're ready to be coaching at a, just a different level. And, but that you're only here because of the fact that you once had a, a lower ceiling where mm -hmm. you didn't even think that you could be a prep coach or, yeah. or even a lifestyle coach. And like that credit goes to Paul because I remember at that point, Paul was like, this girl has to be doing this. Yeah. And, you know, he, he gave, he broke through that ceiling with you. And I think mm -hmm. that's a really important thing to consider here is that we are, we, we have to surround ourselves with people. If we want to grow, we have to surround ourselves with people who ask more of us and push mm -hmm. us outside of our comfort zones. And that those people, they, they change a lot throughout our lives and mm -hmm. our relationships to them change and our just like what we need from people changes. Mm -hmm. And that's like the beautiful part of life is that mm -hmm. we get to have friendships and watch those friendships grow and, and change in, in different ways. And you have like now come to this place of being able to like step into this new chapter of your life 
where you are growing in a way that you never thought possible. Just like three years ago, you were growing at a way you never thought possible. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. And like feeling, and I think like feeling up that momentum kind of like, you know, really built up over the last few years. You know, I remember the first like kind of spark that like inspired me to want to coach was I was at a team pro physique retreat and it was a coach's meeting that I was not supposed to be part of. <laughs> but I was like, Hey, Paul, like, can I come sit in on this? And he was like, absolutely. And then I was like, you know what? Like, I think I want to know a little bit more about this. And that's kind of like what kind of catapulted that. And I came on as a coach and like, obviously he and a couple of others have been great mentors to me. And then I think I kind of in the last maybe year or so, obviously I've been very actively competing too. So some of that focus has been on my competitive career. Um, I've kind of now that I have had time, right? It's been a full year, obviously I'm pregnant now. So I'm like sitting my ass down, but I've had time to really kind of sit with and put my energy towards like brainstorming and allowing some of that to kind of blossom and kind of flow. Um, and going, okay, I really do see a different vision now for myself, or I can kind of see where I can take this further <clears throat> and make this obviously more successful for myself and obviously too for my family. Like, you know, obviously I think anyone who's been pregnant also kind of has those like anxieties or like kind of like intrusive thoughts where you're kind of, your mind starts racing about like, okay, now I have, like, I'm about to have a whole family. Like I have this kid now that I have to provide for. And I think for me, I just like having control, more control, I think over what that looks like. And I like the idea of having more control over my future. Yeah. So that's a big reason too, why I'm kind of just like, you know, now is the time. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Control is, it, control is something like we can't always have full control over our lives, but if we can have, if we have the choice, mm -hmm. like I can control this or I can just continue not being the one in control of this, like finances, for example, then it's, you know, that's up to you. And so, yeah. but it, it can really open up your life. And what I've seen from going off on my own, starting refined strength, you know, even just a year ago, like literally exactly a year ago is when I left and started it um i personally thought like i won't hire any coaches not mm -hmm. for a long time i thought like it'll probably be over a year um i think i thought i'll reassess midway through the year but who knows um so for a while i was turned off to it and that was a ceiling that was a limit that i had and what has opened me up to it was seeing what i've been able to provide for myself in terms of the control and the, just the systems that I've been able to implement that have made me not only a better coach because, and like my clients have all watched this happen, like me becoming a better coach, but it's allowed me to become a better athlete. This is the best prep I've ever had. And I'm, I've had it while building up this business and while hiring two new coaches and, an <laughs> and everything. Um, and it's all because of just like the things that I have chosen to control and the things that I cho choose to think about, which is like mm -hmm. only the stuff that I can control. And that's a big part of like why I feel like my mindset has been so strong with like where I'm at and how I have brought you guys on and like the organization and how it's all, how it all flows together is that I focus on what I can control and I don't, I let go of what I can't. Yeah. That's and I like, think I think what also kind of just made it so, I guess not to say just like easy, um, but what I think made it kind of obvious to at least obviously the two of us and then obviously Jess too, like, I feel like every time we get together to have a conversation or like, I see you post something like motivational or like this, like the vibes and the tone um and like the like what we value a lot of it <laughs> like the majority of the time if not every time just aligns so much and like we just kind of feed a lot off of each other's energy and like so it kind of just made it seem like it would just be a very easy 
transition. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. like it, me jumping on board with you two, like just obviously two means that I believe a lot, obviously in you, but in the community and like the culture that you've kind of built and cultivated and like just the vibes, man, the vibes, the vibes are, just, are high. <laughs> the vibes are high. <laughs> But what I've found too is that like life gives you so much more back when you stop trying to like take so much from it. And what I have like, yeah. that's a big part of like how I've grown this year is like, instead of focusing or fixating on the things that I don't have or the things that I wish I had, like, I wish I had a bigger house. I wish I had a nicer car. I wish I had you know, you know, better inquiries, like client inquiries, if I'm talking like from a coach's aspect, but I could wish those things, but wishing for it or stressing about it, fixating on it doesn't do anything. It doesn't act. It's not productive. It's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, if I look back on like, you know, over a year ago where I was like, I wish I was making more money for what work I'm putting in. Well, I can either wish for that or I can create it for myself. Creating it for yourself is scary because it means you own your own business and you risk losing friendships, right? You risk losing out on the, the community you're leaving risk. behind. Yeah, huh? it is. I mean, it is a big risk. Like, yeah. and I think anybody, pretty much anybody can tell, like, agree or say, like, and there's a lot of reasons why a lot of people don't take that leap to do that they want to be comfortable or they're too afraid yeah. of what life looks like on the other side of that discomfort or they're but, just yeah. too worried about the what if too it's like well what if dot 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 but you cannot yeah. say that about literally anything <laughs> yeah. you could say what if i fail or you could also say what if i don't fail and I, every time i've chosen to say what if i don't fail what if i am actually really good at this or what if i can actually learn this or actually pull through or pull this off or whatever then every time it's it's paid off like i had that doubt about you coming over here i was like <laughs> no and then she feels awkward and then we're not friends anymore <laughs> and i was like but what if she actually sees the value in this and she's like really excited and we become even closer like what if that like i'm gonna go with that that feels a lot better than yeah. the alternative right yeah. and it was like i mean i was surprised when you asked just because like you know, again, like I know that you kind of really weren't in the mindset of bringing on a coach. Um, so it was just like a, a delightful, like, oh, she's like thinking of me like that. <laughs> um, and to be honest, and like, obviously I've said this to you, like through messages or like on calls or whatever, but like, I just, I felt really flattered that, you know, you wanted to bring me on to something and be a part of something and like, add me to this thing that you've built and like put so much love and effort and time into creating. And I was like, oh my God, well, I hope I don't fuck it up. <laughs> like, that was like my first, <laughs> that was my first thought um, was like, damn, okay. Like, you know, I hope that I can bring enough to the table where she feels like it was worth the risk of, you know, asking and then bringing me on. So, but that's just I cause I care. <laughs> You care. You have a really big heart and like, that's why you are so good at what you do. And that's why you also have the reputation that you have. And I think, you know, reputation, it's something that can really like make or break you in a lot mm -hmm. of ways. And that's why like, I see you as someone who's similar to myself, similar to Jess, um, as someone who always makes decisions based on would I be proud to make that decision? Mm -hmm. Would I be proud of myself or proud of my daughter or my husband or my best friend? Like, would I be proud of the person that made that decision? And like, is that something that's like, am I operating in kindness? Am I trying to be, am I driven by values that are mm -hmm. maybe we don't have all of the same exact values, but we have a lot of similar ones. We have a lot mm -hmm. of alignments there, but you have to decide like, how am I going to really live out those values? Because it's one thing if the values are written on the wall, but it's a whole other thing actually living them out. And you really live out those values every day as an athlete, as a coach, as a friend. And just my goal for Refined Strength and for you is to like help bring that out of you even more and show you how great of a coach you really are. 
and even mm-hmm. how much more of a great athlete you can be by being a better coach, because I know that being a better coach for me has made me a better athlete. Yeah. And that's, that's why my prep has gone so well this year. And that's why I'm so excited for like my next off season and like your prep and Jess's prep. <laughs> right. I think that's like, I'm so excited for next year too, because obviously I'm not prepping. Like I'm really focusing on obviously one being a mom and then two really focusing. Like I, it's the first year I really ever had to focus on just coaching and my career as a coach and really growing and cultivating that and like nurturing it more. Cause like it's as much as we tell ourselves, like we're doing all the things at hundred percent capacity, we can't do everything at hundred percent capacity. So I'm excited to have a year where I actually like am taking a lot of the energy and focus I would give towards prep towards work and making that better and just being a better coach and like learning how to kind of just do everything better than I've been doing it. What are some ways that you want to become a better coach specifically? I think, and one of the things that is already kind of happening is like just really helping my clients kind of like come together and build a community um, through like, whether it be a group chat with my clients and kind of encouraging them to like just interact with like-minded people and kind of feed off of each other in in the sense of like you're all here to grow and just be better each and every day um and we're all striving for similar goals not the same goals obviously and they're not all driven by the same purpose but um i think one of the things that i think is hard in the fitness industry and like when you're actually pursuing fitness goals is not everybody is going to appreciate and see the value in what you're the work you're doing on yourself. So that's going to be a a big thing for me is like kind of really encouraging my clients to come together in a community in that way. And then obviously too, we had all, we all have like, you know, your community of clients and just this community of clients. Um, But then I think too, just what I, what I initially kind of thought was like, do's and don'ts of coaching and online coaching in the sense of like what my limits are, like what, what my job description is, right. Is like, I, I know my strengths as a coach and like what I can, or my personality and character strengths can help me be a better coach in ways where like, I am very much an empathetic person and I really, I used to think it was one of the more annoying things about me, (laughs) but I love being able to like provide my clients with tools that kind of help them elevate, not just their routine in the kitchen or like in the gym, but like in life in general, um, mentally, spiritually, like saying, Hey, you know, if we're really kind of not good at managing stress, then I think one of our primary goals, aside from, your diet is we need to come up with better stress management tools because obviously your quality of life is first and foremost, you know, like your quality of life and your well-being are really important. Um, and so, and for a long time, I kind of held back on me, like, I think reaching into like my clients' lives and kind of being like, Hey girl, you know, maybe we don't, (laughs) maybe we change the way we kind of, you know, perceive stress or like, here are some books that I love to read. Um, you know, here are some, some ways to kind of manage some of that stress, whether it be like, you know, five minute to seven minute, even 10 minute, like meditations, like there are just ways that I want to help my clients more than just like adjusting their macros or adjusting their cardio. Um, and then also just getting more detailed with my check-in process. I think having a format that I like really enjoy looking at and using, and there's something that's kind of more customized to how I want to use, how I want to see my clients tracking the information, um, is also a kind of an added benefit of like kind of venturing off and doing things the way that I want to do them specifically. Um, because it just makes it like obviously easier for me to read through my clients' check-ins and say, okay, cool. Like over the last month, these are what these numbers are looking like. Mm -hmm. And here's how we're tracking them. Here's how we can change them if we need to. 
Um, yeah. And I think to me, it having your clients better that way, yeah. just like the more detail you have. And that's what I've found too, is like the more detail I've added instead of it, what I used to think, which is like more detail is bad. It's going to add too much work or add too much stress on the client or, or this what or that. Should just know to like, tell me these things, like even taking yeah. her, like, Oh, I, my clients should just know to tell me, you know, yeah. they have moved in two days. <laughs> like, yeah. And it, it, what it does is it like, it adds this level of self-awareness that I think becomes this superpower for clients. Mm -hmm. And what I've found is like my clients have become so in love with the check-in process, maybe not all of them, but like a lot of them <laughs> so in love with it. And they find it as this really cool, like grounding practice every mm -hmm. week where they get to like oh, dig in, wow. dive into like where they're at, how they feel, how they look, all of it. And they, once they start to understand how I work and how I do, like I do all the, like the digging into their lives and things like that appropriately obviously but um, <laughs> like it allows them to if they know themselves better they then have better buy-in to the program they understand why i'm not making any changes this week i just want you to focus on stress management yes and whereas me a year and a half two years ago coaching and talking about that stuff it was a lot harder to do that because I didn't have the tools in place for them to really see the importance of it. Mm -hmm. And I also held back a lot because of what I felt like was right and wrong for me to talk about things like that. Like what's in my scope or what am I qualified to talk about? No, I just, I understand how to speak better and I understand mm -hmm. how to, how to work things like that into my scope. And it's made me a lot better of a coach and it's made all my athletes better too. Yeah. I mean, the amount of clients that I've had, I, I, I always get surprised by the amount of women that like really don't know enough about their cycle even to like yeah. kind of be proactive when it comes to managing their symptoms or like recognizing, you know, when cert, like there's actually like an onset of symptoms, whether it be like through ovulation, whether it be through like their end of their luteal phase going into their period. And like, it's funny, I'll once I started telling my clients to like label, like what phase of your cycle are you in? And then, or even to just date their last cycle. Um, that way I could like pinpoint like, okay, we're probably around ovulation or like, here's where we're at. It's so funny. Like I've had a handful that I can like think about where they have literally <laughs> like, it's like calendar work. Like they'll be like, Oh, like coach, I'm just so tired this week or I haven't been motivated. I've been craving or like, I've just been more anxious or more stressed out. And I'm like, okay, so every single month around this time, we start to feel like this. Yeah. And they're like, oh yeah, okay, cool. Right. Like that's, and I'm like, okay, cool. We can start predicting that and be proactive about, okay, when are we gonna start using our stress management tools? We don't need to wait until we feel like yeah. shit to go, okay, I need to take like five minutes out of my day to just breathe or I need to start hydrating more so that I'm it's not rest day maybe yeah right the rest day or pulling back on training intensity because obviously everybody's cycles are different but it always like kind of like makes me kind of pat myself on the back whenever they're like that just changed my life I'm like hell yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that, that's what we're doing we're changing lives and we uh, if we can get better at pinpointing how to change a life then obviously more lives are going to be changed and mm -hmm. we can like, we can empower these people to be even better versions of themselves and then be better athletes, especially those who are competitors. The more we understand about our bodies, the better our bodies are going to function and the better mm -hmm. our bodies are functioning health wise, the better they're going to respond. Yeah. If all we're doing is talking about macros and cardio, then we're missing out on so much, so much and we don't get to really get into like the nitty gritty details of like, why might your body respond this way? Or why do we need this in place or that in place? And if you miss out on those details, you, you might miss a lot of, you, you're going to leave progress on the table Yeah, as a coach you are. And I mean, I definitely don't like doing that as an athlete. So you bet your ass. I don't like doing that as a coach, <laughs> like no progress left on the table, dude. <laughs> so, yeah. So what is right now you are about to head out on maternity leave and yeah, you're uh, like both. six, eight, six ish weeks left, I think. Yeah. So right. tell me, 
talk about how how you're feeling going into that and what's the like what's the next step for that as a coach well i had had some anxiety about it because i was like how am i going to manage this um and obviously we got to talking and you guys have graciously um (laughs) accepted to handle my check-ins while i'm away um the other nice thing about i think like just updating and changing the way that we're doing check-ins and tracking client progress um, is I get to kind of go in ahead of time and kind of map out my client plans um, for while I'm away so that, yeah, we have a tentative outline now, you know, kind of what I'm expecting to like have my clients doing. Um, And then, you know, if you guys make any adjustments or changes, you can go in and adjust their sheet. And then I can come back and see exactly what you guys Every did, you know, everything went, yeah, pick up where we left off. So that is, ta- that has taken like such a weight <laughs> on my shoulders now that I kind of know. And I think like I, my biggest thing was making sure that my clients felt very secure in like, and confident and like, didn't kind of feel like, okay, for six weeks, I'm just not going to hear back from my coach or I kind of don't really know what I'm doing or why I'm doing it. Yes. So that like that to me like makes me excited because then i can just come back and be like cool this is what we were doing here's how we're going to pick things back up um other than that i'm just like well i have to push this baby out (laughs) so (laughs) so that's like the only thing now that i'm like i'll have my oh shit moments where i'm like i'm excited like cool i feel her moving and then i'm like oh shit this baby's gonna have to come out of me at some point um (laughs) <laughs> can't pour back in <laughs> yeah but then she's gonna just she's gonna be here and i can't wait to just introduce her to the world yeah i'm excited for you yeah and the i think what you're doing in terms of being ready for your maternity leave and really giving yourself some sort of leave is important because so many people who are entrepreneurs and like self-employed like coaches are where we don't Like you essentially own your own business. You're 1099 for, for me now. And so that's like similar to where you were before. Whereas like, if you're not working, you don't really get paid. Right. And so, yeah, your, your clients need to be taken care of if they want to continue progressing. And so that's why I've been excited to bring you on and, and take them over during that time to allow you that, but also just like, I respect you so much more for actually giving yourself the time off, like taking this month off of posing and it's not easy. You know, like it was not easy. I was like, I, and like, I still feel a little bit of guilt, honestly, which I know that I shouldn't. Um, but to be honest, like, I hope all my, like anyone listening that has been working with me or worked with me knows that I literally am so excited to come back. Like I will miss, I will genuinely miss you guys. (laughs) Yeah. And and you're going to come back better than ever. And it's, it's all, it's all going to work. But yeah. so after your leave, we have something exciting coming up. We yes. are doing a postpartum challenge, right? Yeah. Talk, yeah. About, and, talk about that. Yeah. So it really is going to be, I don't want it to have anything to do with calorie restriction or fat loss. Um, really part of it is it's mostly going to be an accountability challenge, partially for me, because again, community is really big when it comes to like feeling kind of motivated and having that extra push to continue striving towards your goals. So, you know, part of it's going to be me checking with myself. And then the other part is going to be like kind of having this platform to continue to hold myself accountable. And then anybody that wants to join me in that can do that. So the focus is really going to just be, not necessarily calorie restriction, but like meal prepping and planning, you know, making sure that I'm feeling my body properly and not like forgetting to eat <laughs> or, um, you know, getting my, my body moving, whether it be like for 30 to 45 minutes a day. Um, and so it'll kind of just be structured like that. I do plan on kind of providing um, a bit of a PDF or an ebook that will help you kind of follow along in that. Um, my plan is to kind of do it for eight weeks. Um, and then so I would like to kind of also have like, here's a template grocery list. Um, here are some meal prep hacks and easy kind of like, here, like do meal prep with me. Um, the other part of that is I 
do want to create um, some sort of like library of videos um, for the workouts that I'd, I'd be doing. It actually is going to be, believe it or not, at home <laughs> because I think for me, part of the accountability and like getting back into the groove of things is also setting a realistic expectation for like what I can expect out of my routine. Like it's going to be completely thrown off, right? Or not thrown off because that sounds bad or negative. No, but... it'll be thrown off. It's okay. <laughs> it's, it'll be we straight are, up. We're not going to have any mom guilt over here. Like it's going to be thrown <laughs> off and that's okay. Yeah. That's part of it. My whole day in life is going to revolve around her and her routine. Um, when she needs to eat, when she naps, when she's not napping. So I, it is going to be geared more towards, I think, you know, maybe new moms or like just moms in general that are just very busy trying to juggle it all, but it really can be for anybody. It's not just exclusive for moms. It could also just be for people who are actually just struggling with accountability and like kind of knowing how to structure their day. How many meals should I be eating? How much should I be hydrating? Um, and so it's going to kind of be structured that way where you get to kind of follow it at your own time, your own pace. And then, um, once, you know, you purchase the PDF, you have the option to subscribe to the video library where we can also do the workouts together, minimal equipment required. Um, and then I think I would like to actually see that grow and add to that where I create other adaptations <laughs> like, okay, we've done, you know, eight weeks of home workouts. We've learned how to, you know, structure our day of eating. How frequently should I be eating? Should I be eating before a workout? Should I eat? Should I train fasted? No, <laughs> maybe not. But, um, okay. How do I kind of progress and like, maybe take this to the gym, you know, and kind of let it really work for getting getting into each level because a lot yeah. of people i think especially new moms who are really like wishing they want to bounce back mm -hmm. immediately they try to do way too much all at once yes or they expect themselves to do more because they see x mom influencer or whatever doing what she's doing or they see someone who's not even a mom doing something and they think like i should be doing what she's doing and the, I think the cool thing about this challenge is that it will be much more realistic and again, about giving yourself grace and yeah. being just accountable to the basics that- Very different you... than like the bodybuilding all or nothing mentality yeah. that I also can live by. Um, but I think it's gonna be fun to kind of challenge myself in this way of like, okay, I really need to just meet myself where I'm at, which yeah. where I'm used to going, fuck my feelings. <laughs> I have to do, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and I think in that way too, like I get a chance, I'm excited that I get a chance to relate now very on a personal level through experience with moms. Um, I have, you know, worked with moms and I have a couple of moms that I work with now and, you know, they can tell you, like, I'm not someone that's going to be like, you know, you didn't get sleep last night, but like, why didn't you get your workouts in? Right. It's like, I yeah. definitely like to meet them where they're at, but now I can do that through personal experience and knowing exactly how that feels. So, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's a great thing for especially competitors who are taking a break from competing to become mm -hmm. moms and, or to have a child if they've already had some, because that that's a big identity crisis. I think for yeah. a lot, I have a few competitors now who are pregnant and they're, they're going through it, just wondering like, am I training too hard? Am I doing, am I working too hard? Or like, you know, they're so used to being so in tune with things. Or am I not doing, I'm not training enough. I'm not going to the yeah. gym. Like I haven't gone to the gym in months. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and, okay with that and not have that fuck my feelings, follow the plan. I'm going to do it anyway. Because yeah. like you have a whole other person to think about whether they're inside you or outside you. Yeah. And that's, that's the beauty of this challenge is that it's going to help bridge the gap between those two identities. Cause you can absolutely be a high level athlete and a high level mom, but you have to find the balance between the two. There's going to be seasons of motherhood and athletehood that allow for something a little bit more than others and mm -hmm. you know we know as well as like anybody is like there's a lot of high high level athletes who are at high are, are also moms 
Yeah. And I mean, look at, I mean, Janet came, like she's yeah. had her daughter and she freaking killed it. You have Angelica coming back after two kids and exactly. she looks freaking amazing. India Paulina, you know, I'm sure I'm like, we could list a handful. Um, oh, dude, Franciella, the, our wellness Olympia champion mm -hmm. was also a mom. Um, yeah. and I think like, like you said, each phase, like we have, we have to allow ourselves to kind of just meet ourselves where we're at. And, but like, they're all beautiful and they're all worth being present for instead yeah. of putting so much pressure on ourselves to like be perfect and, you know, drop the weight in an X amount of time. Um, and I think what people find is when they just focus on those little consistencies of like, Hey, let me make sure I have my four or five meals a day, like get my protein in hydrate on a regular basis, get my movement in 30, 45 minutes, maybe an hour, right? Like, however, whatever that means to you, you like will see so much more progress through a short period of time than you would trying to do all the things all at once. And then you fall off because it wasn't sustainable. And then you try to pick it back up and do it again. And then but like, you're also just a whole thing, like a hamster yeah. wheel where you're constantly either disappointed in yourself or punishing yourself or, you know, with small moments of being like, Oh, I'm doing a good job. And it's like, yeah. that's not worth it for all of that punishment and disappointment. Not at all. No. So I'm freaking pumped about that. Cause there's something I've never done before. So I'm freaking excited to like have that be one of my first projects to work on as I come back. Yeah. I'm excited for you. And so we will, have lots of information about the challenge and what it entails and we will put it out there so make sure you are subscribed to our channel so this channel will be putting out information about it we will both be posting about it on our instagrams and then we'll probably have an email list that you guys can subscribe to so you can stay involved and like stay tuned for when everything starts and uh and it's going to be available for people past the point when it starts, you know, the ebook portion of it. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Yes. Is there anything else you want to add in the way of just giving advice to someone about to go through a big change in their life? It's Who's scared. It, yeah, I think I, I really feel like if there's, if there's something kind of like pulling you mentally or kind of like that where that's kind of, how do I word this? I think, and this has always been a theme of mine, like since I started competing and like started doing this as a habit, but cause when we talked about this again, off camera, but I know this about myself. I'm definitely someone that has struggled for a long time with giving into a lot of self-limiting beliefs. Um, and kind of shortchanging myself because I was either afraid of how it would look to other people um, or how other people would perceive me. And I think it's important that you just don't be afraid to glow up, dude. Like just there, obviously, you know, make sure you have your ducks in a row. Don't just like jump off a cliff with it, you know? <laughs> but um, I think if you have a vision and something that truly makes you excited to just get up every day and work at it and work on it and fine tune it, refine it, make it better, water it, watch it grow. Like do that, like find, find a way, find your resources, educate yourself if that's what, what is needed. Um, and do it. And I think just don't be too afraid. So afraid of either like your own intrusive thoughts, um, or the thoughts of other people and don't like, but like, don't let that allow you to kind of hold yourself back because either that little monster in your head or someone else is telling you, well, it's going to be hard. Like mm -hmm. that's of all the reasons to not do something that should not be on your list of reasons to not do something. Yeah. So because the, those other people, whether it's a voice in your head and it's you or it's, but especially if it's other people, those people aren't paying your bills. Those people aren't <laughs> For real. Those people aren't you, and they are not. They they don't have any real weight in your decisions. And it's mm -hmm. one thing, you know, if it's a significant other or 
you know, someone very close to you, but at the end of the day, you have to take care of you. Mm -hmm. And if the people around you don't support you taking care of you in the best possible way, then they don't truly support you. And it's really hard to understand and accept that sometimes, but sometimes that's the shit. That's what happens. And (laughs) we gotta, we gotta always come back to ourselves and know that we are, we are taking care of ourselves. And that is like, if I can sleep at night knowing that I'm a good person, I'm taking care of myself, I'm betting on myself and believing in myself, it doesn't fucking matter what other people believe or what they say or what they they choose to um, subscribe to. What matters is what you feel about yourself and how you are showing up in the world to the people that you impact. Yeah. And like, not just the way that you show up for other people, but the way you show up for yourself. And like, yeah. that is something that I've ne- like learned over the years too, is the more you show up for yourself and the more that you water your own garden, <laughs> literally, the more, the, the more you have to, and the better you can show up for other people. Like yeah. I wouldn't be the coach that I am today and be able to show up for my clients the way that I do had I not done the work on myself and also yeah. allowed myself to kind of continue to grow and evolve. So yeah. And that's a common theme with, you know, refined strength. So yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm here. We're refining and aligning over here. So, We're on uh, brand. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And thank you for, of course, for joining me and, and Jess now at Refined Strength. I'm excited for everything that's to come. So everyone listening, thank you for listening. Uh, yeah. Make sure you follow along, sign up for the the challenge if it fits you and um yeah stay tuned because we have all all sorts of good things coming in the next year for refined thanks guys bye